In the history of show business, there have been many theatrical families, the Barrymores, the Redgraves, and the star of this edition of This Is Your Life, whose family has a 350-year history on the stage. Hello, I'm Ralph Edwards, and in 1958, when I showed this This Is Your Life book to our subject, she was at the peak of her career, not only as an actress, but as one of the first women directors in the movie industry. She was surprised in a setup at a phony real estate office. Watch. Hello, Ida Lupino and Howard Duff. How are you? Nice to see you. I'm interested in real estate. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'd like to offer you some, Ida Lupino. <laughs> All America is watching. That's a television camera right out there tonight. Ida Lupino, this is your life. <laughs> real estate deal, is it? Oh, huh? no. It's not all. Oh, we'll no, talk no. about Who's it. With? And old Howard over here. Oh, you hurry. I we thought you were a good actor, but man, you're better than that. I thought you were. We went to the length of, of renting this vacant building. It was vacant. Uh, that's uh, not uh, their receptionist. That's my receptionist over there. We furnished, decorated it like a real estate office just to fool you, Ida. Now we have a police escort outside, and they'll rush you and Howard and the whole bunch of us, but safely, to our studio, okay? Yes. <laughs> Get Ida going, will you there, Howard Duff? You take two there, Dave. Go along. Uh, Ida, yes, our chair of honor has Thank long you. been awaiting you, oh. I'll tell you that. Thank you, Bill. Oh, a unique uh, personality can influence and alter the march of events. Let's go back through this book, your story. Yes. And see how you placed your stamp on events, and always with charm. This is your life, Ida Lupino. I'm out of breath, how about you? <laughs> if ghosts there be, then a lively company of ghosts was present at your birth in England. Uh, Lupino, who was a duke's friend and made the royal court of Naples roar with laughter, a Lupino who kept the king of France merry at feast or battle, and Lupinos whose acting was relished by the imperial monarchs of old England. How many years does the uh, Lupino family go back in stage history, Ida? Well, I believe, Ralph, according to my uncle and my father's book, about 350 years. Let me see if that's right. Yeah. Listen, I'm not very good at 350, remembering these that's things. right. <laughs> Never in history has one family been in the theater that long. No. Yes, Ida, you are the descendant, the 14th generation of a tribe of clowns, <laughs> acrobats, dancers, writers and also rogues. <laughs> and you are the most mischievous rogue among the lot of us. Now there's the voice of a Lupino from England. Can you guess who it is, I Ida? I know, it's my Uncle Barry. You just mentioned, the surviving brother of your father, the late Stanley uh, yes. Lupino. And like your father, a great stage star of England. Here from London is your Uncle Barry Lupino, senior. <laughs> The camera's low enough to see to see Uncle Spank uh, Ida here. Oh, I've done that many a time. For a fellow of seventy-six uh, years, you you look like a youngster there, yeah. young man. Seventy-five. Oh, seventy-five. Now you spoke of rogues, sir. Uh, don't tell me that Ida inherits a tendency to break the law. Well, I don't know. The first Lupino who went over to England in about fifteen hundred and something. Mm -hmm. He tried to give a show in the middle of Trafalgar Square. <laughs> Yes. And he was arrested for being a rogue and vagabond. Oh, no. Sent to jail. Oh, yes. Fine thing, a Lupino arrested for his acting. <laughs> now, Ida, you broke a, a good many rules yourself as a young girl. What, uh, what outrages uh, did Ida attempt, Uncle Barry? Shall I tell them? Go ahead. Well, when she was about eight, she wanted to have blonde hair and she dyed it. And yes. She was about ten, she would insist upon wearing long dresses. Yes. <laughs> Cause a little trouble, but I always came to her aid and... Uh, and we smooth matters over, but I admired your pluck for doing so, anyway. <laughs> Yet I can't believe this, you know. <laughs> After all, Ida was only being a true Lupino. Oh, uh, yeah. Ida, the newest actor in the Lupino line, is in our audience right now. There he is, your second cousin, Richard Lupino, up there, a rising young actor here in Hollywood. And, uh... 
fellow who's going to Dickie. make his name in the illustrious Lupino. Thank you, Uncle Barry Lupino, for coming here from England, oh, sir, darling. to be with Ida tonight. <laughs> into this colorful family for a space you worry the entire Lupino clan. Now, because you show no inclination at all toward acting until you're 11, when your father builds at your home a marvelous miniature theater. That's right. Now, here your interest in acting comes to sudden bloom, giving scope to an imagination that is endlessly vivid. That imagination is the one that we survived it. You scared the very wits out of all the children in the family. Well, the voice of the first of the most cherished companions of your childhood, here from Bayside, Long Island, New York, wife of comedian High Sands, is your cousin, Tony Lapino. Here's Tony. <laughs> Another member of the fearsome foursome of those days, now a gifted dancer and actress, Mrs. Henry Plone of Hollywood, your sister, Rita Lapino. <laughs> And a very special surprise from London, England, where he's the TV producer for the BBC, your cousin, Barry Lupino, Jr. Barry Jr. Yeah. Well, each of you uh, has been victim to uh, Ida's famous imagination. Now, uh, Tony, would you like to register the first complaint? <laughs> yes, I will. Ida, do you remember when we were children, we used to love to play pirates? Yes. And you always insisted that it should be realistic. Yes. Being the smallest, you used to make me walk the plank. Yes. Well, this day, you and Barry dropped the plank, and I fell and broke my arm. That's correct. <laughs> that I could forgive. But when you and Barry took me in the bushes to try and straighten <laughs> out, oh. that I couldn't forgive. <laughs> Tell me, I tried to straighten your broken arm out? That's right. Oh, Ida. And uh, there's the grisly case of Napoleon's hand. Ida, yes. do you remember Napoleon's hand? What about that? Yes, I do. Well, I, my father had it on this little pillow. He was yeah. a great admirer of all the hands that had been done of Napoleon, and he, he had, had this in there. his den. And uh, uh, he used to scare other kids with it. Was your, was, uh, your home at uh, Streatham the setting for Ida's story of Napoleon's hand, Rita? Yes, Ralph. It was an airy old house that used to be a monastery. And Ida believed it was a little old lady in gray that used to haunt it. And in the middle of a sound sleep, she'd get me up in a terrible whisper and say, Get up! I saw her! And I'd tremble, and she'd make me go in front of her down these dark corridors, and she'd say, If the little old lady touches the hand, it's going to reach out and grab it. And I was terrified. Wasn't I dreadful? Uh, it scares me just to hear it now. Uh, now, what have you to tell us about Ida's ways, Barry Lapino Jr.? You better be careful, Barry, because I know some <laughs> awful things about you. <laughs> well, we, um, we have to go back quite a time, really, and um, I remember when Ida and I were kids, about 13 years of age, we were rather keen to go to a, a dance hall, a rather shady dance hall with a rather dubious reputation. <laughs> well, we arrived there, and being too young, we uh, weren't allowed in, so Ida was a bit annoyed about this. She dragged me back home, and she got into some of her mother's clothes, and... Um, well, we got back at the dance hall, and when she arrived there, she was such a convincing old hag, they let us in. <laughs> Thank you, Tony, Rita, and Barry Lapino, oh. Jr. Oh, oh, I can see you never lack for excitement in Ida's school of acting. <laughs> at 14, most unexpectedly, you get your first part in a movie. How did that happen, Ida? Well, uh... I've been waiting for a long time, you know, ever since I was about seven. And uh, an American director came to England, was directing over there, a very well-known director by the name of Alan Dwan. Yes, indeed, Alan Dwan. And he gave me uh, my first chance. And I must say, at the age of 14, I felt terribly in love with him and had my first schoolgirl crush. I just adored him. That film brings an offer to play Alice in Alice in Wonderland. That's correct. Right? And, uh, of course, that uh, was to be filmed in America, and your mother brings you to the USA. That's to right. carry on your life from that point, here from Las Vegas, Nevada, is your mother, Mrs. Connie Lupino. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I, I don't believe uh, Ida ever made that movie of Alice in Wonderland, did she, Ms. Lupino? No, she did not. She got out of it. Yes. You tell Ralph. 
how you played the part of Alice when you had to make the screen test. Well, apparently, Ralph, I had a terribly deep voice ever since I was a little girl. And uh, they heard this voice, and they said, you couldn't possibly be Alice. You sound like Mae West, and oh. you do not get the role. <laughs> <laughs> so I never did play Alice. Well, that's right. Uh, but the, the studio forgives you and launches you in a series of roles as a pretty young angel. One year later, it looks as if your career is ended forever. How you fought for your life and health, and later fought for your chance to be a top dramatic actress, we'll learn in just a moment. Remember... Back to This Is Your Life, beautiful, tempestuous motion picture star Ida Lupino from a royal family of the English theater. <laughs> Popular girl of 16, your bright world is suddenly shattered one night in Hollywood. Uh, what happens, Mrs. Lupino? Well, Ida came back from a date with Tom Brown. It was early, so they went into the kitchen and they tap danced and all. Oh, they had so much fun until about midnight. So then Tommy went home and Ida and I went to bed. But within an hour, she came to me and awakened me and said, Oh, Mommy. I feel so desperately ill. Well, I had read in the papers about the polio epidemic. So I didn't know what to do. I was panic stricken. So I took a temperature and I tried to remember some of the symptoms that I'd read about. So I said, oh, I'll, I'll try and check them. And when I did, I instinctively felt that either had polio. The doctor comes tell you that your diagnosis uh, was correct and your quick action may have given your daughter her only chance. It is polio. And weeks of anxiety are ahead for you, Ida. Did the polio leave you with any lasting effects at all? Oh, well, a little, uh, Ralph, yes. I, it impaired my right hand a little bit. I see. Uh, this threat to your life leaves you with such sympathy and insight concerning polio victims, that one day you will make an important picture that will become a milestone in the rehabilitation of the paralyzed. Thank you, Mrs. Connie Lapino. You'll see your charming daughter, charming mother, and just a moment. Now you're in your 20s, an excitingly lovely girl, but a tempest is brewing within you. You're fed up with playing only ingenue roles, a sweet young thing with the roses over your arm. You tell your friend Hedda Hopper that you're going to stage a real rebellion. Now, Hedda was all for it, wasn't she? Yes, she was. Bless her heart. And uh, what did you want and what did you do, Ida? Well, I talked to Hedda, Ralph, and I said, what am I going to do? I'm not getting anywhere. I'm playing these little fluffy blondes. Mm -hmm. She said, well, I'll tell you what, darling, with that marvelous voice yes. of hers. She said, number one, let your eyebrows grow in, scrape all that makeup off your face, and let your hair go natural and then go and think and study a little bit about acting. And I said, all right. I did it. I was off the screen, I might add, for about 15 months. But it was worth it because I made a comeback in a You're right. pretty decent picture called The Light That Failed. And I have had a, to thank for that advice. Great advice. Mm -hmm. A great gal, isn't she? Yes. Preferring to starve rather than surrender, you spend a full year away from pictures. And then That's one right. day... I was preparing to film the great Kipling story, The Light That Failed. Ida swept into my office and asked me point blank for the key feminine role in my picture. Yes, uh, it's the great director whose yes or no that day meant everything to your future. Academy Award winner and director of such films as Wings, they're all classics. A Star is Born, Battleground, and The High and the Mighty. Here's your good friend, Mr. William Wellman. <laughs> Bill Wellman. He knows how it feels to be up there because Bill was a principal subject on His Your Life and a great one, too. Ida not only came to ask for the part, but she knew all about the story and the characters, didn't she, Mr. Wilson? Yes, that was right. And Ida, you convinced me that you were the only girl to play the part of Bessie, that odd, mad little cockney girl of the story. So I sold the studio. You did. And you sold the public. Yes. You've been doing it ever since so beautifully. Well, thanks to you, Bill. No, Ida, I got one more thing to say. Yes. That you are chair. Chair, which in uh, the strange language of my kids means the greatest. Uh -huh. Oh, you darling. Thank you, William yeah. Wellman. To your vision, Ida Lupino proves herself a dramatic star of the very first rank. Thank you. Daring to discard 
glamour by becoming a villainous and uh, the girl you love to hate. Uh, you thrill the world in such great hits as They Drive by Night, Ladies in Retirement, The Big Knife, High Sierra, and many, many more. Remembering how Alan Dwan and William Wellman had helped you through these years, you look for a way to give other young people their chance. With intense application, you learn the entire technical side of movies. And when you felt ready, what way did you decide upon to help young talent, Ida? Well, uh, let me put myself, you know, completely in the chair. I did not want to become a producer. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> They're very badly treated people. Oh. <laughs> I, I wanted to uh, discover them, and so uh, I wrote on a script called uh, Not Wanted About Unwed Mothers. Yes. And unfortunately, our director was taken sick, so I took over. Yes. But uh, the only way I could discover young talent was to form this little company with a partner of mine, Collier Young, and discover these young people. Filmmakers come. Filmmakers, right? that's right. And then you embark on an astonishing task. <laughs> Mother Lapino personally interviewed <laughs> hundreds of us then unknown young people. <laughs> Mother Lapino. And I'm glad you did, Ida, because I was at the end of that line. Here are some of the glowing young stars you found and created. First, the very beautiful and talented Sally Forrest. <laughs> producer Keith Frizzell, who has just finished his independent picture, Death Over My Shoulder. Keith Frizzell. My God, my God. And another fine actress of rare beauty and ability, Mala Powers. <laughs> another principal subject on Is Your Life. My, the stage is filled with them tonight. Now, tell us about yourself and some of the Others Ida gave a start to, will you, Sally Forrest? <laughs> well, Ida gave a start to Mala and myself and Keith, and mm -hmm. I know we're all grateful to her for having opened the door to wonderful careers. Oh, what Sally. about you, Keith Brazell? Well, uh, Ida decided I shouldn't be a truck salesman anymore, <laughs> so I went up to her house to audition for her one day and gave probably the worst reading in show business, didn't I? Ida? I didn't think so. <laughs> <laughs> she took me right over into a corner and calmed me down, and oh, she's a great girl. <laughs> uh, when we did your life, Mala Powers, Ida told us how she discovered you. Now, you were just, I think you were about 18 then, weren't That's you? That's right. And I was thrilled, and I was very scared. <laughs> oh, you I didn't show it. Oh, I did. Plenty. I want to say one thing to you that I have never said before, and that is that you not only gave me the greatest chance of my life, but you gave me something more, the greatest gift that an actor can have. You believed in me, and I just had to succeed for you. Well, darling, Al. And there are many others, too, but these are three golden futures unrolled because of your big heart, your ability as Hollywood's uh, rarest talent, a woman producer-director. <laughs> Thank you, Sally Forrest, Keith Brazell, and Mala Powell. Thank you, Sally. Your former marriage has ended. You go to live by yourself at Malibu Beach, and it's there you find at last the personal happiness you deserve in the form of a neighbor who happens to take the house nearby. And here he is, your happy husband, TV and motion picture star, partner and co-star with you in your hit television series, Mr. Adam Sneed, Mr. Howard Duff. <laughs> oh, the poor guy. I'm yet <laughs> He's just been going through all kinds of trouble and all that real estate deal. How did this <laughs> romance of yours get underway, Howard? Well, uh, I guess, uh, Ralph, it was just uh, simply a case of uh, love by neighbor, you know. Yeah. I went over to fix a couple of screens and I broke a few and uh, uh, this is the result. Well, uh, you're uh, not scared of being married to brains and beauty, Howard. Man, I count on it. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, Ralph, uh, I guess about the greatest gift that... Uh, Ida has uh, given me, given us, is, uh, is our child. Mm -hmm. uh, being a, a post-polio patient, it wasn't too easy for us. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we all want to see that little girl of yours, so here she comes, five-year-old Miss Bridget Duff. Bridget! Yeah. 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 Oh. <laughs> yeah. Say, Bridget, is your mother good about telling you stories at bedtime, honey? She is. Well, she'd better be because, here, do you want to get right down here, baby? Once upon a time, uh, when Mother was a little girl in England, she had a nurse she loved who used to tell her stories and tuck her in bed at night. If little Bridget is anything like you, Ida, 
She always wanted one more story. A voice you haven't heard since your childhood, Ida. We traced her from England and found her in New York. Your nanny, Miss Gertrude Inglis. <laughs> now, this is a dream of yours come true, isn't it, to Miss Inglis? It certainly has. And one thing I would love to do is put little Bridget to bed tonight. Oh, to you Bring will. me right back. Oh, you, you. I can't. You. Darling, this is wonderful. And that kind of brings us back to the beginning. Oh, yes. This is your life. Ida Lupino, a life of vitality and goodness in which you've given greatly to the world. Oh. A penny's worth of hope. Your future begins tonight at a party in your honor at the Hollywood Roosevelt Hotel where your family and friends have been staying. And uh, you can relive this night many times by running your own film. Tonight's program on this Bell & Howell 16mm uh, sound projector. This Bell & Howell movie camera is yours too. Now Crest has had uh, Marshall Jewelers of New York City. You've seen us do this before with Marshall's wonderful work, haven't you? Mm -hmm. Now. Uh, they designed a special gold bracelet for you, Ida, oh, and these wow. portrait and crystal cufflinks for you, Howard. Bridget, hand that to Daddy, Thank will you? you it there. And Ida, in your immediate future, we know you are soon to offer a line of Ida Lupino fashion uh, creations designed by you. Now, you've been sketching at the studio on just anything that was handy, so Crest is presenting you with your very own artist drawing table, illustration boards, a palette, and an entire assortment of art equipment from Mr. Stanley Grumbacher, president of the Grumbacher Company. Also, you put your heart into bringing hope and courage to uh, uh, polio victims. So Crest is uh, proud to give, in your name, a $1,000 check. Thanks, Bill. Ah. Oh. There you are. A uh, $1,000 donation to the National Foundation for Infantile Paralysis. Oh, yeah. We hope that everybody comes out of the this season. We learned you've been waiting. Uh, for a long time and wanting a new and up-to-date hi-fi for your home. So Crest wants you to have this wonderful RCA Victor Mark IV high-fidelity phonograph with four speakers and stereo tape player. And one of the first records you'll want to play on it is this one right here, a record made by your late great father, musical comedy star Stanley Lupino. Now listen to your father's own voice in a few bars from this song that you love. And I say, tweet, tweet, shush, shush, now, now, come, come. And there's no reason to go when I say, tweet, tweet, shush, shush, now, now. The great stars of all time. And you're starting a record career of your own again, following in your father's footsteps with the Leo Gill Zephyr album, Premiere. That's a wonderful uh, album we're all going to get. Now, you're truly a shining star. You have illuminated the world about you with generosity and kindness. We salute lovely lady of our time. This is your life, Ida Lupino. Good night, and God bless you. Uh, Ida Lupino obviously had that rich imagination since childhood, an imagination which helps actress and director alike in constructing great performances. Ralph Edwards saying thank you for being with us for this edition from the library of This Is Your Life, The Classics, and join us again when we'll salute another great life in our series. been awaiting you, oh, I'll tell you that. Thank you, Ralph. Oh, a unique uh, personality <laughs> can influence and alter the march of events. Let's go back through this book, your story. Yes. And see how you placed your stamp on events, and always with charm. This is your life, Ida Lupino. I'm out of breath. How about you? If ghosts there be, then a lively company of ghosts was present at your birth in England. Uh, Lupino, who was a duke's friend, and made the royal court of Naples roar with laughter. A Lupino who kept the king of France merry at feast or battle. And Lupinos whose acting was relished by the imperial monarchs of old England. How many years does the uh, Lupino family go back in stage history, Ida? Well, I believe, Ralph, according to my uncle and 
My father's book, about 350 years. Let me see if that's right. I yeah. Listen, I'm not very good at 350, remembering 350, that's right. <laughs> Never in history has one family been in the theater that long. No. Yes, Ida, you are the descendant, the 14th generation of a tribe of clowns, <laughs> acrobats, dancers, writers, and also rogues. <laughs> And you are the most mischievous rogue among the lot of us. Now, there's the voice of the Lupino from England. Can you guess who it I is, I know, it's my Uncle you Barry. just mentioned the surviving brother of your father, the late Stanley uh, yes. Lupino. And like your father, a great stage star of England. Here from London is your Uncle Barry Lupino, Sr. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. What? <laughs> Nick, you didn't have the cameras low enough to see to see Uncle Spank uh, Ida here. Oh, I've done that many a time. For a fellow of seventy six years, you you look like a youngster there, young man. Seventy five. Oh, seventy five. Now you spoke of rogues, sir. Uh, don't tell me that Ida inherits a tendency to break the law. Well, I don't know. The first Lupino who went over to England in about fifteen hundred and something. Mm -hmm. He tried to give a show in the middle of Trafalgar Square. <laughs> Yeah. And he was arrested for being a rogue and vagabond. Oh, no. Sent to jail. Oh, yes. Fine yes. thing, a Lupino <laughs> arrested for his acting. <laughs> now, Ida, you broke a, a good many rules yourself as a young girl. What, uh, what outrages uh, did Ida attempt, Uncle Barry? Shall I tell them? Go ahead. Well, when she was about eight, she wanted to have blonde hair and she dyed it. And yes. She was about ten, she would insist upon wearing long dresses. Yes. <laughs> Caused a little trouble, but I always came to her aid and... Uh -huh. And we smoothed matters over, but I admired your pluck for doing so, anyway. <laughs> Yet I can't believe this, you know. <laughs> After all, Ida was only being a true Lupino. Oh, uh, Ida, the newest actor in the Lupino line, is in our audience right now. There he is, your second cousin, Richard Lupino, up there, a rising young actor here in Hollywood. And uh, that fellow is going to Dickie. make his name in the illustrious Lupino. Thank you, Uncle Barry Lupino, for coming here from England, oh, sir, darling. to be with Ida tonight. <laughs> Born into this colorful family for a space you worry the entire Lupino clan. Now, because you show no inclination at all toward acting until you're 11, when your father builds at your home a marvelous miniature theater. That's right. Now, here your interest in acting comes to sudden bloom, giving scope to an imagination that is endlessly vivid. That imagination is the one that we survived it. You scared the very wits out of all the children in the family. <laughs> well, the voice of the first of the most cherished companions of your childhood, here from Bayside, Long Island, New York, wife of comedian High Sands, is your cousin, Tony Lapino. Here's Tony. Now, what have you to tell us about Ida's ways, Barry Lapino Jr.? You better be careful, Barry, because I know some awful things about you. <laughs> well, we, um, we have to go back quite a time, really, and um, I remember when Ida and I were kids, about 13 years of age, we were rather keen to go to a, a dance hall, a rather shady dance hall with a rather dubious reputation. <laughs> well, we arrived there, and being too young, we uh, weren't allowed in, so Ida was a bit annoyed about this. She dragged me back home, and she got into some of her mother's clothes, and... Um, well, we got back at the dance hall, and when she arrived there, she was such a convincing old hag, they let us in. <laughs> Thank you, Tony, Rita, and Barry Lapino, Jr. Oh, I can see you never lack for excitement in Ida's school of acting. <laughs> Fourteen, most unexpectedly, you get your first part in a movie. How did that happen, Ida? Well, uh... I've been waiting for a long time, you know, ever since I was about seven. And uh, an American director came to England, was directing over there, a very well-known director by the name of Alan Dwan. Yes, indeed, Alan Dwan. And he gave me uh, my first chance. And I must say, at the age of 14, I felt terribly in love with him and had my first schoolgirl crush. I just adored him. That film brings an offer to play Alice in Alice in Wonderland. That's correct. Right? And, uh, of course, that uh, was to be filmed in America, and your mother brings you to the USA. That's to right. carry on your life from that point, here from Las Vegas, Nevada, is your mother, Mrs. Connie Lupino. Yeah. Oh, 
<laughs> I, I don't believe uh, wonderful. Ida ever made that movie of Alice in Wonderland, did she, Miss Lupino? No, she did not. She got out of it. Yes. You tell Ralph how you played the part of Alice when you had to make the screen test. Well, apparently, Ralph, I had a terribly deep voice ever since I was a little girl. And uh, they heard... In the history of show business, there have been many theatrical families, the Barrymores, the Redgraves, and the star of this edition of This Is Your Life, whose family has a 350-year history on the stage. Hello, I'm Ralph Edwards, and in 1958, when I showed this This Is Your Life book to our subject, she was at the peak of her career, not only as an actress, but as one of the first women directors in the movie industry. She was surprised in a setup at a phony real estate office. Watch. Hello, Ida Lupino and Howard Duff. How are you? Nice to see you. I'm interested in real estate. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'd like to offer you some, Ida Lupino. <laughs> All America is watching. That's a television camera right out there tonight. Ida Lupino, this is your life. <laughs> real estate deal is there, oh, huh? No. It's not all. Oh, we'll no, talk no. about oh, it. And oh, Howard over here. Oh, you're... I, we thought you were a good actor, but man, you're better than that. I thought you were. We went to the length of, of renting this vacant building. It was vacant. Uh, that's uh, not uh, their receptionist. That's my receptionist over there. We furnished decorated it like a real estate office just to fool you, Ida. Now we have a police escort outside, and they'll rush you and Howard and the whole bunch of us, but safely, to our studio, okay? Yes. <laughs> Get Ida going, will you there, Howard Duff? You take two there, Dave. Go along. Uh, Ida, yes. our chair of honor is Thank long... You. The fearsome foursome of those days, now a gifted dancer and actress, Mrs. Henry Plone of Hollywood, your sister, Rita <laughs> Lupino. <laughs> and a very special surprise from London, England, where he's the TV producer for the BBC, your cousin, Barry Lupino, Jr. <laughs> Barry Lupino. <laughs> well, each of you uh, has been victim to... Uh, Ida's famous imagination. Now, uh, Tony, would you like to register the first complaint? <laughs> yes, I will. Ida, do you remember when we were children we used to love to play pirates? Yes. And you always insisted that it should be realistic. Yes. Being the smallest, you used to make me walk the plank. <laughs> yes. Well, this day, you and Barry dropped the plank and I fell and broke my arm. That's correct. <laughs> That I could forgive. But when you and Barry took me in the bushes to try and straighten out, oh. that I couldn't forgive. <laughs> Tell me, I tried to straighten your broken arm out? That's right. Oh, Ida. And uh, there's the grisly case of Napoleon's hand. Ida, yes. do you remember Napoleon's hand? What about that? Yes, I do. Well, I, my father had it on this little pillow. He was yeah. a great admirer of all the hands that had been done of Napoleon, and he, he had, had this in there. his den. <laughs> And uh, uh, you used to scare other kids with it. Was your, was, uh, your home at uh, Streatham the setting for Ida's story of Napoleon's hand, Rita? Yes, Ralph. It was an airy old house that used to be a monastery. And Ida believed it was a little old lady in gray that used to haunt it. And in the middle of a sound sleep, she'd get me up in a terrible whisper and say, Get up! I saw her! And I'd tremble, and she'd make me go in front of her down these dark corridors, and she'd say, If the little old lady touches the hand... <laughs> it's going to reach out and grab it. Oh. And I was terrified. Wasn't I dreadful? Uh, it scares me just to hear it now. Uh, 